an avatar, I've mentioned before, an avatar is beyond our concept of God. I don't mean an avatar is beyond God. I mean, no matter how big we can think, the avatar is much greater. That's an autobiography of a yogi. Sri Yukteswar said, the avatar's attainment is inconceivable. So Jesus and Mary, they are divine beyond our comprehension of divinity. And can you talk to them? You sure can. Of course, they may not talk back or they may talk back and you can't hear them. Because Jesus said, if you have, you have, you have to have ears to hear and eyes to see. But it's all very real. But when it still comes down to it, you also are the ultimate reality. You must realize yourself. Knowing some, like, I don't need to eat because I know lots of people who just ate a big meal. No one would say that, that wasn't crazy. So why say, oh, Guruji's enlightened, that's enough. Oh, I met these enlightened people. I can tell you people I've met in India, including the one, one of my favorites who was wandering around the dirt roadways of rural Bengal, pretending to be insane. And she wasn't insane at all. She was incredible. When my first visit to India, which lasted for nine months, I was always for nine months in walking distance of at least one saint. Believe me, I met a lot. I saw a lot. Incredibly great beings. And of course, after that, uh, I had many trips to India, and I most always travel with Ananda Ma. And uh, loads of great people came to see her. So I don't mean politically powerful people, though they came. Uh, but uh, so in traveling with her, I saw a lot of very, very remarkable people. And I saw Ma. Don't ask me to tell you about Ma in the sense of what was she, who was she? I have no idea. And I don't believe anybody else had or has. People would say to her, what are you or who are you? And she would say, I am whatever you think I am. It doesn't hurt to mull that over <laughs> for a pretty good amount of time. There are people who thought they understood mother. They thought they related totally with mother. They would tell other people. There was a, a super intellectual who came from Dallas, Texas. He had no background in Hindu Dharma at all. And believe me, if there ever was a Hindu on earth, Anandamai Ma, she was certainly a Hindu. Uh, he came and he was this super intellectual. He read a lot of philosophy and he went around explaining mother to everybody and explaining mother's teachings to, to everybody, which of course was absolutely absurd. You know, it, it, it just couldn't happen. So she was what she was. You listen to what she said and apply it. That's all you could do and say, she told me something to do, it worked, or I just, she told me, and it didn't work. But who she was, it's anybody's guess, and it'll only be a guess. I wouldn't say that about anybody else. Shivananda, he was a great liberated being. He was as a God on the earth. I could know without being in his condition everything about him. But I can tell you this, this was absolute perfection. And that I have, I have no doubt of. But Ma, she was a mystery, but Ma Shakti is a mystery, you see. Bhagavan, the male aspect of God, is very comprehensible to us for some odd reason in our own limited way. But Ma, no. Ram Prasad wrote a song, says, who knows who Ma Kali is? Even the six darshanas are powerless to reveal her. So I could go on and on a lot about Shivananda. I couldn't about Ma. 
I mean, I could tell you some funny things she said and some funny things she did. Uh, some of the <laughs> pranks she pulled on me, but you don't understand what it means. You know, one time mother in Delhi, mother just said, everybody leave here. It was you know, just a modern sized room. Everybody left and there was just mother and I. So mother started talking to me and I understood her. And I talked back to her and she understood me. That of course, I didn't cause a bobble. Naturally, mother would know what I had to say. One time an Italian professor came to India. He couldn't speak a word of English. I don't know how he'd made the arrangements, but he found his, his way to the ashram in Benares and came there and they, they figured he wanted to talk to Ma. No one there had any idea of Italian. And so, of course, he was just heartbroken. I mean, he'd come, spent all that money, he'd come all the way to India. Now, what could he do? Ma said, it's all right, tell him to come see me. So Ma gave him a whole interview in Italian. Ma said that she had the ability to speak any language she wanted. I knew a woman that was Kashmiri. And one time Ma came into her room in the Delhi ashram and Ma started a conversation with her in Kashmiri. And after about seven or eight minutes, Ma suddenly realized, whoops, not supposed to be able to know Kashmiri. So she just, <laughs> she continued on in Bengali. But the, the woman's husband said, Ma, you didn't fool me. After all, I've been sitting here all this time and you've been speaking Kashmiri to us. So there was this way, you see. Okay, I will say something more. When you were with Ma and Shivananda, they were absolutely unique about anyone. I could tell you about great yogis, remarkable yogis. Mahananda, Brahmachari, I cannot tell you. It was like the infinite was speaking to you. I, I've met these yogis, you're just in awe. And here's the difference then. When you were in the presence of Ma and Shivananda, you were deeply self-aware. You knew they were glorious. You knew they were wonderful. But they didn't pull your mind out. All the other yogis, they did. They were so amazing. You were there. Your mouth was hanging open, at least figuratively. And you're just sort of, wow, what a vibration, what a magnetism, and so on. But no, it was quiet with Ma and Shivananda. And you were all inward. And that's what the presence brought. Instead of you being, oh, them, them, them. No, you were aware of me. I remember one time I'd been staying in an ashram about a mile away from where mother was at the holy city of Haridwar. And, uh, uh, you know, I've been traveling. I was frazzled out. That's the real truth. S starving a bit. <laughs> and so I walked all the way in from the ashram to <clears throat> see mom but Ma wasn't available. I went into what was a gigantic hall. It was a satsang hall. And uh, as I say, I was really frazzled. I felt really tired and just sort of... <laughs> and so I, I went to the back of the hall where there were some people I knew and I, we began talking and I was surviving. I was able to give a coherent conversation, but I was really, like I say, and then all of a sudden, I felt this relief. I felt fine. And my mind, all the pieces fell in place. And I thought, oh, I know what's happened. I turned around, and Ma was just walking in the door. So I can tell that to you. There are a lot of stories about Ma did this, Ma did that. People were shocked. It's true. Ma touched me the first time I met her. She didn't want to touch me. And I insisted she touch me and she touched me and I went nuts basically, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> but I really did. <laughs> and it had happened to people. There were people that would touch Ma when she was in Samadhi, though really with Ma, when was she in or out? And they just fall on the floor sometimes for hours before they would come back or they would be constantly reciting mantras and things like that. Ma sometimes would laugh. She could calm down and then with the moment she quit touching them, they 
go back again. But I can tell you that was there. This peace. I have seen people come in to where Ma was, just stand and look at her, and I've seen tears of relief just flow from their eyes continuously because they experience this peace, heavenly peace, and quiet. And they themselves, you see, came into balance. It wasn't just all Ma. She gave that much, that much of my grandpa. This is, this is true, you see. So that does happen. And I will tell you, Soham Sanna is the only thing that has ever had the same effect as Shivananda and Ma had. That I'll tell you. That I will tell you. That state, however you want to say it, Baba, that is inherent in Soham. Yes. In the beginning was the word, the word was of God, and the word was God. And then I will add to it what a wonderful, glorious yogi I knew, Swami Om Karananda, who was from Switzerland, actually. Incredible person. She was about 90 years old. And uh, she gave a couple of talks. I heard at Shivananda Ashram at Shivananda's request. And she recited, but in English, uh, some verses that describe the self. And then she would say, very quietly, no pretension, and that am I, and that am I. Okay. Namaste. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you.